everyone. So today's video is brought to you by Uhuhu. Uhuhu is an art supply brand that's like best known for their alcohol markers. I absolutely love their alcohol markers and I'm not just saying that because I'm sponsored. I've actually been using their markers for like years and years now. But yeah, thank you so much to Uhuhu for sponsoring this video and for sending these markers here um, in this box. So if you guys have been on my channel for quite a while, uh, first of all, thank you. And second of all, you probably have seen my, or like you might have seen my previous video sponsored by Uhuhu. They actually sent me their, I think, 256 color set. Like it was something crazy like that. So I already have a huge set of Uhuhu markers. Let me actually just bring it over. Okay, so it's not gonna fit in frame with this box here, but yeah. This is my current marker collection when it comes to Ohuhu markers. Um, it's a lot. <laughs> so I think it's like 256 colors. Let me see. Oh wait, no, 216 colors. Still quite a bit. Now you're probably wondering why I have this set if I already have all these colors. And basically Ohuhu made a 320 marker set. But then they realized that like some people might just buy the 216 set. So in addition, they made, oh my God, everything's breaking, one second. They made <laughs> this set here that you can see covering the entire screen right now. Let me just drag this away. Anyways, they made this set here uh, that has 104 colors and all the colors are basically the missing colors from the 320 set. So like you can buy the 216 and then get this, or you can get this and then buy the 216 to like complete your collection. Now, as you could probably tell from the title of this video, there is going to be a giveaway, um, but I still don't know any of the details for the giveaway. But um, basically I asked Ohu if they would be willing to do a giveaway with me so that you guys can get something out of this as well. And they were totally down for it. The prize will be a pastel marker set, but um, if you'd like to know all the details, I'll have like a section in the video timeline thing showing exactly where the giveaway part starts. Anyways, that's enough rambling. I'm gonna just open this box up and um, yeah, see what's in here. Also, um, apologies for my voice. It's really stuffy because I have I have a really bad cold that just does not want to go away for like a week now. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> this thing is really taped up. Also, my desk is like collapsing. It's so crammed. Um, but it's okay. Is this even the right way? Oh wait, never mind. There's this here. All right, here it is. So this is the case. It actually comes with a strap, which is weird. Actually, wait, no, it's not weird. Maybe it is weird. I have no idea if it's weird or not. Um, I can't remember if the 216 set comes with a strap. I don't think it did, but it has like these thingies on the 216 set. So it could have a strap. Anyways, um, <coughs> sorry. Let me unzip this so we could see the colors. Oh, also the front of the bag just looks like this. Anyways. Whoa. Okay. These are all the colors in the set. Basically, all the colors are missing from the 216 set. Um, yeah. Swatching is very important with alcohol markers. So even though I hate swatching, I will 100% have to swatch this set, which I will do in the next clip. Um, there's also like the mint. Ow! Oh my god, that cactus. I hate this cactus. I just put it here for the aesthetic. Anyways. It comes with a manual. Um, and then it also comes with this thing that you put at the back of your paper to prevent bleeding. But yeah, that's pretty much it for the unboxing part. I'm gonna fill these swatch sheets in the next clip. And then we can create something fun with these hopefully. Okay, so here is when I fill the swatch sheet with the colors. So the color selection for this set is actually really nice. Like you can make a variety of things with these colors. 
However, I don't recommend getting this as like a standalone set. So if you don't already have a marker set, uh, I wouldn't recommend this one just because there's no black and probably some other basic colors are missing. Now it's still a really good set. Like it had enough colors for me to do everything in this video. All it's missing is just like a basic color set. It doesn't even have to be the 216 one. It could be any one of the previous sets. I would just check to make sure that there's no color duplicates. Okay, so I'm finally done swatching. And um, one of the things I was worried about is that this would be like a small box, right? Or like a small square bag. I was worried that there's no dividers, but to my excitement and surprise, um, <laughs> there are dividers in here. There's like four sections, so that way I don't have to have a disgusting mix of colors. I can actually put them in a cute rainbow order. Um, but yeah, I love that about this. Um, it's one of the things I really appreciate about Uhuhu. Um, and it's better than the individual slots because it's just easier um, to manage. So yeah, anyways, that's, this is, these are the colors. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry, I'm dying. Anyways, I swatched all the colors here. Um, now, while I was swatching the colors, I realized that I actually love the color selection and I just want to use these markers in this video. I'm not going to use my, um, what's it called, 216 color set in combination with it. It's just going to be these ones. And that way you guys get to see whether this is worth it or not for you um, to get the 100 and what's it four set 104 set yeah I'm excited to use this I keep saying that I'm gonna I'm gonna stop <coughs> I'm gonna stop stalling <coughs> and start drawing in my sketchbook okay so we finally reached the drawing portion of this video uh, it took me a really long time to figure out what to draw for this video. And the reason for that is because I'm just so rusty at drawing. I'll get more into that a little bit later on in the video. But yeah, I finally picked something to draw and got it to actually look nice. Because I attempted to draw this thing earlier and it was so gross, I had to scrap it. Anyways, um, what I'm drawing here is a random original character from my previous, previous sketchbook. I drew this character once and then I kind of just ditched the entire idea and yeah, that's that's how my original characters usually go. Anyways, I decided that, well, I was like looking back at my old sketchbooks randomly because I was reorganizing my art stuff. I was looking back, I saw the drawing and I don't know, I just felt an urge to bring the character back but I didn't commit to it <laughs> until now. Um, I finally mustered up the energy to actually draw this character again. I'll put a picture of the original drawing on the screen. Uh, it was just an upper body portrait thingy. Uh, I didn't really design the entire character. So yeah, I had to decide how to design the lower half of this character. And I also added a cool sword just cause like, I don't know, I always wanted to have a character with a sword but again, I never really committed to it. Anyways, next up here, I'm drawing a fish because I love drawing fish. It's like a comfort thing to draw. <laughs> Almost as fun as drawing eyes. Now, uh, you could probably notice that I'm drawing on like a separate piece of paper from my sketchbook. And the reason for that is because on the first page, the leftmost page, uh, I have something drawn, well, sketched out on the other side. And I didn't want to ruin that with markers because markers bleed through. So because of that, I had to use uh, paper from my old moleskin sketchbook that I never finished. Uh, I just like ripped it out of the sketchbook and used it here. Now, if you think the two sketches on screen are a random combination, wait until you see this next sketch. <laughs> um, for some odd reason, I felt like now would be a great time to draw Gerald of Rivia from The Witcher. Uh, I watched the Netflix series and I've been a huge fan for a while, but then I also played the game on my Nintendo Switch and it's like, it's so interesting. It's really fun. There's some scenes that I just skip through because it's like, it's just kind of weird, <laughs> but a lot of it is just like really cool fighting, really fun adventure. And yeah, I've been enjoying it. Now, he looks really out of place on this page with a fish and a unicorn hoodie girl. But like at this point, I was just like, 
anything that inspires me to draw, I will just do it. Like, that's kind of the theme for this video. I didn't want there to be a theme. I didn't care if there was a theme or if there wasn't a theme. Like, I just wanted to draw because I was so art blocked. I have been so art blocked. I've been so unmotivated to work in the sketchbook. And I feel like a part of that, the, the issue and the reason why I'm so art blocked all the time is because like I put way too much pressure. Like I just care too much about certain things. So I was like, okay, if I want to draw a Gerald Silver video right now, this is my chance to finally draw the character because I've been meaning to draw the character for a really long time now. So yeah, um, by the end of the video, you're going to see that he just like really, really looks out of place because in the next page, I actually felt like continuing the original character artwork, um, which was surprising. I thought I would just draw her once there in the like the cutout version and be done with it. But it actually really sparked something in me um, and I was like motivated to draw her again. Anyways, up there in the corner, I drew a cute little thumbnail version of her. And I also drew this blobby side character. Uh, the whole purpose of that blob thing is because I wanted to experiment with colors. So I wanted anywhere the blob creature thing overlapped to turn yellow orange. Um, so yeah, you'll see later on my idea come to life. It actually worked pretty well. But uh, overall, I'm not super happy with the blob character. I feel like I can make it more unique looking. Uh, right now, it kind of looks generic. But yeah, I'm definitely going to keep working on the blob character, make the face and maybe even the shape more unique. Uh, for the time being, that's how it looks. Anyways, here I'm drawing um, a bathroom scene. <laughs> I was inspired by this picture on Pinterest of a guy fishing in a toilet bowl. I know, it's, it's super weird, which is exactly why it inspired me. Uh, that's the exact kind of thing to drag me out of an art block, honestly. And yeah, I wanted to incorporate my original character in it because I want my original character to live in just like a weird kind of universe. I have a concept in mind, but I don't want to talk about it just yet because that usually jinxes it. <laughs> like I usually feel awkward afterwards and then don't do anything. Also, anytime I name a character, I usually get icked out by myself, um, which is like super weird. Like that's such a dumb thing to get the ick from, but it doesn't weird me out when other people give their original characters names. Like I like to know other people's character names. It's just with myself and I have no idea why it happens, but for now, this character is just gonna have no name. I'm gonna refer to her as, I don't know, unicorn hoodie, unicorn girl something like that but yeah back to the actual illustration i had a lot of fun making this bathroom and i tried to make it as weird as possible now it could definitely be weirder like i'm planning in the future of like making this character live in just the most weird random universes maybe she like travels through universes i don't know but the whole thing is like I don't want there to be too much normal stuff. Now, unfortunately, there are a lot of normal objects in this illustration. I'm trying to get better at it and um, make things more creepy and eerie, kind of. I honestly just need to sit down and think of like a random list of super weird objects and then just use that list when making cluttered illustrations like this because it would make it so much easier. Um, it took a long time to think up of random stuff and then I needed to get this video out sometime this year. So I just put random like bottles and stuff, but there was so much potential for just weirder stuff, creepier stuff. So yeah, that's definitely something I'm gonna try doing. Uh, I'm gonna make a huge list of just random odd things that I could put in future illustrations. And yeah, hopefully I can improve at creeping you guys out. Also, in the past, I used to do this fun thing where I'd ask for random object and thingy recommendations on Instagram, like the, the question box on Instagram. And I used to get the wildest submissions. So I'm thinking of maybe doing that again in the future next time I make a background. Uh, it's really fun and interactive and it really inspires me. Like it gets the creative juices flowing. <laughs> so yeah, stay tuned for that if you're interested in joining. Um, my Instagram is linked in the description and also just like on my channel page if you want to check it out. 
I don't post as often as I would like there, but I'm hoping this October to fix that issue and start being more consistent both on Instagram and here on YouTube. All right, so I'm done all the sketching for this video, which I'm really happy about. <laughs> this took such a long time, but I'm actually really happy with it and extremely scared of destroying it. Anyways, um, for the line art for today's video, I'm gonna be using fine liners. Um, in addition to these fine liners, I'm gonna be using some colored pens. So we have some Paper Mate Ink Joy pens here. Um, and then we have two big velocity ones. I don't know which colors and which pens I'm gonna use. So I'm just showing all of them. <laughs> and then we have two Muji pens. Um, what size are these? Oh, one is 0 0.7 and one is 0 0.5. Oh yeah, and for the fine liners, these are actually Ohuhu fine line drawing pens. I would say not sponsored, but I actually am sponsored. <laughs> Um, but yeah, these were sent to me not for this video. They were sent like a while back and I actually genuinely enjoy using them. Uh, I think they're a really good like cheap uh, drawing pen. Yeah, highly recommend. All right, so this is my least favorite part of the art process. <laughs> um, it's inking time. I absolutely hate inking. It gets so, so boring, but it's like, it's a necessary evil, you know? Now, I use fine liners to ink and also some like other random pens. And if you've seen some of my previous videos, you may have heard me say that like I hate using pens. I only like using colored pencils for line art. And that's so true, but I really wanted to switch it up uh, because of my art block. And also, I did all the sketches with a normal graphite pencil. And usually lining over regular graphite pencil with colored pencils, like the Prismacolor Premier colored pencils is so annoying because you have to actually erase with a kneaded eraser or an actual eraser and then reline the entire thing. So I really did not feel like erasing the pencil lines because I loved how the sketches turned out and I didn't want to risk ruining it. So for that reason, I just went over it with fine liners. Now I actually really love how the fine liners looked. I think I just judged fine liners too harshly. Like I came to a decision that I like colored pencils more and I just stuck to it. But yeah, I really enjoyed using fine liners. First of all, it's faster than colored pencils. And second of all, it actually had like a cool effect with the markers. I used the black fine liner for the majority of it, but then for like the stars, where the fish is at over there and some other objects. I used um, the orange and red fine liner mostly. I didn't really use the other colors. So yeah, I'm gonna try to use fine liners more often because they were actually really fun. And since Inktober has already started, I think it's a great time to actually start liking fine liners. So I'm excited to finally start Inktober. Uh, I'm starting a week late, but I'm still going to commit to it. But yeah, back to what's going on on screen right now. Uh, I just finished inking the words on the side of the page and I didn't get a chance to mention earlier on in the sketching process, but this illustration here uh, and also like the previous illustration of my new original character is actually going to be part of a draw this in your style challenge. Now I'll put all the details for the challenge at the end of the video because it's directly connected with the with the actual giveaway. So yeah, all the details for the Draw This In Your Style challenge and the giveaway will be at the very end of the video. And I'll make sure to add timestamps just so that this video is easy to navigate. Now I do wanna mention here though, that if you don't wanna join the giveaway, like if you're just interested in the Draw This In Your Style, uh, feel free to enter and like you can let me know that it's not for the giveaway, it's just for the draw this in your style thing. I'm gonna share every single entry that I'm tagged in uh, on my Instagram story and I'm thinking of also sharing a bunch of them here on YouTube as well. But yeah, by the time this video is posted, I'll probably have an Instagram post up with all the details for the draw this in your style, which will be way easier to read than hearing me ramble at the end of this video. Cause like, spoiler alert, I am so unorganized at the end of the video when describing the giveaway and draw this in your style. But yeah, I'll have, um, I'll have an Instagram post up and I'll also have a YouTube community post up uh, really soon afterwards. Anyways, um, back to the actual art. The inking process was actually so hectic. Like there were so much details and I got super bored. So I started playing Fall Guys on my Nintendo Switch. Like a lot of the footage that you've seen, like 
it was like short five minute clips while waiting for games to start and um yeah i would just alternate between playing and inking it was very interesting honestly and a huge waste of time for sure <laughs> but it's like i don't know my attention span is so short i had to like take breaks here and there also it was kind of like a reward system so after finishing specific parts of the inking process i would like reward myself with a little game here and there and it was so effective like it worked really well anyways um over here i'm finishing up all the inking uh i'm using the colored pens to do the blob character and a couple other tiny details uh, and yeah, I really love how the colored pen stands out in comparison to all the black ink. And later on, when I actually color the orange sections, it really, really stands out. So I'm excited for you guys to see that part. <laughs> and that part actually starts right now. So this is when I start coloring with the markers. Uh, there were so many neon, gorgeous, vibrant colors in this set, which I really appreciated especially this like peachy orange color it was so so neon i was not expecting it to stand out like that so yeah i started off coloring the fish because that was like the lowest risk thing to color in my opinion <laughs> i didn't use a reference photo for coloring this fish i kind of just went with whatever colors i was feeling <laughs> which is why there's like a lot of layering and a lot of changing colors for certain parts uh, but yeah i i'm honestly pretty happy with how this fish turned out I was thinking of turning it into a sticker, but I don't know what the interest would be for a sticker like that. <laughs> also, speaking of stickers, I have been working really hard behind the scenes, like secretly, not really posting on social media about it, but I've been working so hard to try and open an art shop, and I think I'm finally close to being able to launch certain things. It won't be a huge launch, like there won't be a lot of products up all at once. Uh, I'll probably start really slow, but my art shop and my website have been closed for like almost a year now. It's actually so tragic. Like uh, I started building a website last September, like a new website. And yeah, till now I have not launched a single product. I have not published the website. And a lot of people are commenting saying like, oh, your website's not working. And yeah, I'm totally aware that it's not working. <laughs> it's because I'm so lazy or like I'm so indecisive. And I also am just like, it's like perfectionist to the wrong amount, if that makes sense. I don't know why I worded it like that, but basically I just want everything to be perfect when I open the shop and that's not gonna happen, you know? Like I feel like I should just focus on three to four stickers, for example launch the stickers and then take it like take my time launching everything else so at least i have a functioning website for people to access and i could sell like a couple things test it out see how it goes um but at the same time there's a part of me that just wants to launch everything at once and for everything to be cohesive and matching and cute and perfect <laughs> um but yeah it's just not feasible to be honest i need to like i need to chill out you know so my plan is to like fast launch it <laughs> you know like the whole slow launch thing or is it called slow launch um soft launch that's the word i'm gonna hard launch this art shop i feel like i think i'm just gonna randomly one day just publish the website <laughs> um and then like announce it randomly on social media like oh hey um i know i didn't talk about this at all but here's my store not a really good marketing technique but It'll be fun. It'll be hilarious. Anyways, here I'm drawing the character, uh, the, well, coloring the character. I already colored Gerald while I was rambling about art shops. Um, but for the character, I had to decide on a color scheme and that is always so stressful for me. So at the start, it looked really ugly, at least in my opinion. It was like sage green hair and like neon orange shorts. It did not look good. And thankfully I realized that and I changed it. So I made the shorts dark red instead of neon orange. And then I changed the hair off camera because my camera died. But I changed the hair to like an olive, an olivey green. I don't know if it's really olive green, but it's like, it's like less pastel. It's more darker and saturated. But overall, I really do like her color scheme. I'm happy with how it turned out. And yeah. Also, in case you're wondering, the 104 marker set it like it kind of has enough colors for skin tones but um 
it's not the best skin tone collection of colors. Of course, it's it's not meant to be a standalone set from what I've seen on their advertising for it. It's meant to be a supplementary set for the 216 one. So that, that totally makes sense to me. Um, now, there were enough colors to do the skin tone for uh, my character here, but at the same time, it's a little bit too saturated of a brown. Um, I might keep her skin tone this color because I think it looks cute. Um, there's nothing wrong with the skin tone color. But at the same time, uh, if you're trying to do like a realistic, really dark skin tones, I don't think this set would cover it on its own. So I highly recommend either getting like a skin tone marker set or the 216 one. The 216 one, you can get a wide variety of skin tones from my experience with it. But yeah, I'm just coloring all the characters all at once so that I have the same exact colors out and my desk doesn't become a cluttered nightmare. Uh, I really enjoyed drawing the orange blob character. Uh, I think I overshaded it like in this drawing here specifically. Uh, like the face is a bit too orange. I wish I kept it more yellow up there. But it's alright. I think it still looks really cool. And I like the almost like x-ray effect that it has when overlapping the, the unicorn girl. Uh, I really want to experiment more with that because I feel it's really cool and fun. But yeah, this is the final stretch for the drawing. Uh, I finished coloring in the words here and then I moved on to actually coloring the background, which was really intimidating. Uh, what made it a bit easier is that I had like a really nice reference photo for a bathroom that I was like essentially copying. <laughs> uh, I took out a couple of details, added a couple other details obviously, but again, I'll have the reference photo, the exact reference photo for this bathroom here uh, in my Pinterest board. Um, but yeah, I, I link my Pinterest now in the description. I finally made my Pinterest board public. Now I just need to make my website public. That's all that's missing, honestly. <laughs> Now, usually when I'm intimidating, starting intimidated starting uh, backgrounds like this, I start with the colors that I 100% know. So I knew the towel, bucket, and curtains were gonna be red. So I started with that. And then I kind of just filled in everything else that was red. Um, then I did like the beige tiles and like um, bathtub, stuff like that. Now for the walls, um, this is not a color that I would usually pick for anything really but i actually love how the pine green and then later i made it more orange with this tan color i love this forest green color like it looks so cool and like i feel like it makes the neon green actually stand out like crazy and especially the reds the reds pop so hard in this like illustration um so i love the vibrancy and i love the forest green um Whoever designed this bathroom is a genius and has inspired me for the rest of my life. <laughs> um, because now I like the pine green, red, neon green, brown combination, which I personally would not have picked myself. But yeah, coloring this background with markers actually reminded me how fast and easy and amazing <laughs> markers are. Uh, I, I actually really missed using alcohol markers. I have a beautiful set of 216 colors but typical me, I just like forget to reach out for it. And I usually just like default to other materials. So this is just like a reminder for myself that I need to pick up my markers more often because it's so fast, it's so vibrant. Um, there's no color mixing like with watercolors, which is a nice break to have sometimes. So yeah, uh, shout out to markers for being a fun medium to use. <laughs> One thing I will say though, uh, for this particular marker set, it was hard to find um, an exact shade to shade with. Um, that was an odd way to say that sentence, but it was hard to find colors to make shadows with, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, because it like the colors are just kind of wacky, to be honest, um, which makes sense. Again, it's like a supplementary set, I guess. Uh, but using this with a 216 color set would, I would be like super powered. I would be so content. So, uh, because I didn't want to do that though for this video, I ended up using colored pencils on top and I actually love using colored pencils anyways for shadows. So it really didn't make a huge difference for me personally. Like, um, I don't think the artwork quality suffered because the set had limited colors. I think it actually helped in a way. Like I used different colors than us usual for shadows and it made it look really interesting. Like there's pink tones mixed with orangey tones mixed with purple tones. And yeah, I actually like the effect. 
But yeah, the colored pencils definitely carried. Uh, I love the texture and I always use colored pencils with alcohol markers. It just changes changes the vibe completely. And it's a nice way to like subtly change colors here and there as well. Like for the brick wall, I added a slightly deeper tan color, uh, not tan, um, what's the color? Cream? Yeah, it's, it's a cream wall. And um, yeah, for final touches, I just use a Posca pen, a white one for highlights in certain areas. And after that, I was pretty much done with this artwork. Now, the final thing I did for this video is basically just organize the left page and just tape it all together. Uh, so I decided to make the whole thing black and I also decided to torture myself and use a nearly dried up pen. <laughs> uh, kind of glad I used it though because I didn't want to waste paint on turning the page black and paint is usually extremely messy. Uh, I used two scrap papers from Stationery Pal just to add some like texture and interest in the background. And then I just taped the three random drawings on top. Now the fish is a little bit too big for the page, but that's a problem for future me to deal with when closing my sketchbook. And yeah, I just added washi tape and I was done, finally. <laughs> All right, so I'm finally done with the sketchbook spread. I'm actually really happy with how it turned out. And I think it's my favorite spread in my sketchbook so far. I just wanna say a huge thank you to Ahuhu for sponsoring this video again. Um, it really inspired me and yeah, like this was so much fun. I'm surprised how well like the colors worked for a set this size. Not that 104 is a small amount of colors, but I'm just used to working with so much more. <laughs> I'd also like to say a huge thank you to everyone here supporting my YouTube channel and also my Instagram. Uh, we recently reached 10K on Instagram, even though I never post there, which is kind of sad. <laughs> But yeah, thank you all so much for the support. It makes all this possible and it really encourages me to keep keep doing art. I feel like now is finally a good time to talk about the giveaway for this video. So Ahuhu very kindly offered to send a free set of markers to one of you guys. So the prize for the giveaway is a 48 color uh, pastel marker set. I'll put an image of it on the screen somewhere. So in order to join the giveaway and like have a chance of winning the 48 soft pastel set, uh, basically, you just have to join the Draw This In Your Style Challenge. I'm going to be hosting it on Instagram primarily. I'll also make a community post for it here on YouTube just in case someone misses this video. But basically, uh, the requirements for the Draw This In Your Style Challenge is to draw this character here. So I know some people really hate drawing backgrounds. So uh, there's like the option to just draw the character. Like that's the main like requirement. But if you like the background here and you want to like redraw it in your own style please feel free um that would be amazing i'd love to see your interpretation of this character fishing in a toilet um yeah now uh you could do any pose you can like switch the colors a bit if you'd like because this is like a brand new character the design's probably going to change as long as the character is like recognizable and you don't stray too far from the design, I'm totally okay with it. And I won't be too strict with the rules or anything like that. Also, if you notice, the hilt of the sword here is like dark brown, but here it's like more gray. I think I prefer the gray, but if you prefer the dark brown, feel free to like keep it this color or just like not include the sword in the drawing if you don't want to. Also, there's this like orange squiggly blob character. I am not 100% satisfied with the design. So like the design for this character here, like those two drawings of him, those will definitely 100% change. So if you want to make changes to this character and like make it a little less boring looking, uh, I would like highly encourage that. I would love to see your interpretation and you know, like just seeing you guys have fun with it would make me so happy. <laughs> so yeah, no strict rules. You could copy the pose if you want, you could copy anything um, as long as it's, it's like kind of in your own style, even if it's not in your own style. What even is a style, you know? Now, uh, I kind of lied, there is, I think like two rules for this competition. <laughs> well, maybe not competition, um, draw this in your style challenge. There are two rules. Basically, um, please use the hashtag that I'm gonna put on the screen. I have no idea what it is just yet. And also please tag me in the photo just in case the hashtag doesn't work. Also, I lied again, there's a third rule, I think. 
Uh, there's going to be a deadline, but I'm still thinking of when to put the deadline. I think it would be fair to give like two weeks for the challenge in order to win the markers. But then if you want to do it later on and you don't really care about winning the markers, feel free to still like draw it and submit. If you don't want to post something publicly on Instagram, feel free to just DM me a photo of your artwork. Um, and also another thing, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, if you don't have an Instagram account, feel free to email me your artwork. I'll put my business email up on the screen, but please don't spam this email because uh, it's also my personal email. <laughs> yeah, I think I covered almost everything. Oh yeah, one more thing, but it's not like 100% necessary, like it won't disqualify you. But if you could include the original artwork in one of the slides on your Instagram post, that would be great. I'm going to actually post this on Instagram with all the rules written down neatly because I'm kind of rambling right now. But yeah, all the rules will be on Instagram, also on YouTube on a community post that I'll be posting soon. I don't know if I'm missing something. I feel like I'm missing something, but I'm just going to ignore that feeling. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Thank you so much for watching and sticking around through this crazy long intro. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video in hopefully around a week. Um, it's going to be Inktober themed, which I'm really excited about. So yeah, um, see you guys then. Bye.